Sarah. Okay, if we may be seated. Uh, actually, let's be upstanding first so that we get started with the national anthem. Then we can kickstart the program. Yeah. Okay, band. <laughs> Sana, please be seated. So, welcome to Kenyatta National Hospital and to the celebration of uh, this year's World Kidney Day. Uh, KNH has, has always been very kind to provide us with a venue to hold this important event. Uh, the host organization that always works very closely with Kenyatta National Hospital is the Kenya Renal Association. Um, World Kidney Day is held every year on the second Thursday of March. Um, in the past one or two years, we've not been able to hold it uh, physically like we are doing today because of the COVID issues. And usually the whole agenda of World Kidney Day is to bring forth the conversation of kidney diseases uh, where they're supposed to be and emphasize where we are and where we need to go as, as a country uh, when we are dealing with uh, our citizens who are, have the misfortune of having one or the other kidney disease. Um, we've been having entertainment thus far, so I think we'll just go straight to the remarks and we'll intercede them with some uh, entertainment so that you don't all get very bored. Uh, we have representation from the ministry. We have representation from very key stakeholders, uh, the NHIF, which is represented by none other than the chair, Mr. Honra Bolunguyai. We have representation from KNH, which again is represented by none other than the chair, who is Mr. Oko. But first, uh, I would like to ask the chairman of the Kenya Renal Association, who is Dr. John Gigi, who is a nephrologist, to come and welcome us all, and um, we'll get moving from then on. John? Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you very much, Benjamin. We have since changed the constitution of KRA so that in coming times to be the president of the KRA. <laughs> um, the chairman of the board of management of Kenya National Hospital, Dr. Brigadier Kuria, the chief of public health in the ministry, the chair of the board of management of the NHIF, 
the CEO of Kenyatta National Hospital, all protocols observed. Ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> it gives me great pleasure yet again that we are meeting here this year for this very good day, great day, to celebrate the World Kidney Day. Unfortunately, we have not had such a meeting the last two years because of COVID. But the good Lord has been nice to us that we can now come in together in good health to celebrate this day. As Dr. Ambogo has said, this is a day that the whole world today meets to celebrate the gains that have been made over the years in achieving access to kidney health all over the world. But importantly, to be able to champion issues regarding to uh, making sure that patients and indeed any other persons can understand about kidney health. The theme this year of the World Kidney Day is talking about bridging the gap on knowledge about kidney health. We are aware that this gap indeed does exist across the whole continu continuum and spectrum of healthcare within the systems. This includes uh, medical, medical workers, the community health workers, and indeed the general public. Issues regarding literacy, issues regarding knowledge in terms of how much we understand about kidney health, and also issues regarding how we dissipate and uh, manage this health exist. And this has been a big barrier towards uh, managing health disease. So this year round, coming and going forward, we are going to make sure that our people understand about these gaps and how we can bridge the gap. When you look at the world today, we are seeing and understanding much more that chronic kidney disease is becoming a bigger burden than it was last year and other years. This, just like any other non-communicable disease, has been fueled by, among other things, the demographic transitions that exist, rural urban migration, changing economics, and the global world. This has seen it being fueled or has seen fearing of the non-communicable diseases which are very difficult to manage. Diabetes and hypertension cannot be forgotten as major drivers towards this big burden of non-communicable diseases and indeed chronic kidney disease. As a society, we are privileged to have enjoined hands with the Ministry of Health and other government bodies in trying very much to spread word and to take care of health uh, conditions in the country. We have enjoined the Medical Practitioner Density Council to enforce the regulation on quality delivery of dialysis services in the country. And in a few months' time, you'll be seeing many of our nephrologists visiting dialysis centers to ensure that you indeed deliver what you promised uh, the citizens, quality uh, services. We are also involved in a training of nephrologists at the East African Kidney Institute by providing our able nephrologists as faculty members. Today, we have got uh, close to 50 nephrologists courtesy of the trainings that ha are happening around uh, within the East African Kidney Institute in which we have seen uh, more than six nephrologists qualify within the last uh, three years. We have also enjoined, been enjoined in the advisory team in the Ministry of Health that is charged with the responsibility of drafting the organ and the blood transfusion bill. When this bill is finally enacted, we'll be able to bridge one very big gap in the river transportation service in this country. We are aware that donor paucity is a big challenge. We don't have enough donors. And this uh, exposes our underbelly of uh, offering transportation service in the country. If the bill is passed on or is passed, then you'll be able to get uh, kidneys from non-related donors and more importantly, perhaps in our lifetime, we'll be able to spread out and get uh, kidney donors from diseased uh, persons, which is going to be a key thing for us. Now, we cannot forget the challenges that we have been faced as a society and indeed as a country in delivering services. And one of them is in healthcare financing. KRA is understandably a key partner with the Minister of Health in ensuring the rollout of, the roll out of UHC. And access to dialysis and kidney transplantation is crucial for our kidney transplant patients. We know the little challenge you have had with 
uh, the NHIF. And I note that currently there is engage, stakeholder engagement in matters regarding and reimbursements, which hopefully will favorably ensure growth for dialysis services and clean transport in the country. So ladies and gentlemen, allow me to welcome you and the president of the Kenyan Association to this great day and feel at home and you will hopefully enjoy and learn a lot. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ngigi, for those remarks. Um, when discussing these conditions, KRA has for a long time uh, put the focus where it needs to be. So we always believe that before any conversation is had, we need to hear from the patients. And uh, we have stood firm with that principle for, with all our events. So at this time, allow me to invite uh, Dr. Uh, Mr. John Gikonyo, um, who is the president of the Renal Patient Society of Kenya. John, are you around? Ah, Karibu sana, John. Uh, thank you, Dr. Ari. Um, <clears throat> our distinguished guests, uh, ladies and gentlemen, or protocols of SAPT, good morning. My name is uh, John Gikonyo, and uh, I'm the president of the Renal Patient Society of Kenya, and also a kidney patient myself, living with a transplant since the year 2015. And I am here as a proof evidence uh, that there is life after kidney disease. I've lived with this now for about six years. I look healthy, I feel healthy, and I am healthy. And therefore, kidney disease is no longer uh, a death sentence as uh, it used to be a few years ago. Uh, the current advances in kidney disease treatment, be it dialysis or transplant, uh, should afford those afflicted uh, a comfortable life. This can never be a completely normal life because this is a chronic condition and the circumstances that we live under as patients demand that we adjust our way of life to live with this condition. And therefore, when we seek ways uh, to ease these adjustments, it should not be seen to amount to, speaking spe uh, to seeking special treatment as these are necessary adjustments for our new normal. There is need for a friendly, accommodating environment and a compliant, well-financed uh, health system so that uh, kidney patients everywhere they are in the country can feel well accommodated and uh, taken care of. We need the governments, that is national and county uh, governments, to take a leading, uh, leading role in this and uh, call upon them to, among others, one, continue investing in robust kidney disease care and management with more dialysis centers and transplant units in different parts of the country that are easily accessible. Ensure smooth running of existing uh, public dialysis units without disruptions, usually occasioned by frequent stockouts of dialysis consumables and machine uh, breakdowns. And uh, this is uh, a problem lampant usually in uh, the counties and more so in the counties in Western Kenya. Uh, <clears throat> number two, promote NCDs, that is non-communicable diseases, prevention and early intervention to curb the rising numbers of kidney failure in the country. The recently launched Universal Health Coverage Program would be the best place to achieve this by focusing more on primary health care. We also need to promote public awareness and education on non-communicable diseases, that is NCDs, their prevention, treatment, and management. Number three, exped uh, expedite the organ transplant bill that seeks to enable uh, deceased organ and uh, non related organ donations. This will expand the donor pool and allow more uh, kidney transplants. Uh, number four, include pre-transplant evaluation, post-transplant clinics and medication in the NHIF transplant benefit package. 
This will encourage those on dialysis to go for transplants, and this will be a, a big relief from the ever-rising, uh, never-ending cost of dialysis. Uh, finally, I would like to relay the gratitude of all kidney patients, particularly to our doctors, our nurses, the National Health Insurance Fund, our caregivers, families and friends for their continued support uh, as we remain on this treacherous journey. It is your support, love and encouragement that balms the sting of living with kidney disease. Asante. Uh, before I sit down, just give me one more moment. Um, I would like to make a few remarks in regard to the current support that uh, we are getting from uh, NHIF. And uh, I'm excited that uh, I can see Honor Bunguyai, who I can now say is my friend because we've actually met quite regularly in the last uh, two or three months uh, trying to speak about this uh, NHIF cover for kidney patients. Um, I've mentioned the universal health coverage, which was launched uh, last month. And universal health coverage simply means access for individuals and communities to quality health care without suffering uh, uh, the heavy burden or financial burdens of uh, the cost of paying for these services, or what we call catastrophic financial burden of health care. And we are excited about this. But this excitement, Bonanguiai, has been short-lived because immediately this was announced, I, I personally came to KNH. And the reason I did this is uh, KNH is where I do my transplant clinics. But it is not available among the hospitals where I can select uh, as an NHIF out uh, patient facility. But because I do specific uh, transplant clinics that can only be done in the hospital where I was transplanted, there is no other facility that can give me that service. So when I came here and inquired, I was advised that the best thing would be to go to my selected NHIF outpatient facility and then they should give me a referral letter which I would bring to, N, uh, to KNH and then the KNH would be able to pick it from there. I did that, and uh, when I came here, I was disappointed further because it was still not possible. So as a person living with a kidney disease and who needs to do regular uh, transplant clinics, I am unable to access universal health coverage through KNH because it is not in the panel of outpatient clinics, and I cannot get the service I get here from uh, other hospitals. It is sad because um, I think as last week, I saw a message from uh, our kidney <coughs> transplant coordinator here at this hospital calling upon transplant patients to please stop avoiding clinics. And the reason they gave <coughs> is that the cost is too high. KNH has recently doubled their consultation fees uh, <clears throat> in the last two months or so. And uh, it is very expensive now to be a kidney patient. The, it is very unfortunate, Bonanguiai, that some of the patients who now skip uh, these uh, transplant clinics still end up in this hospital, but they only come when they are too sick and it becomes necessary that they become admitted. So the cost that could have, NHIF would have paid for that patient, for out, uh, patient clinic, suddenly becomes such a big cost when that patient is admitted for up to two months because they have serious complications. So I don't think NHIF is saving any money by not paying for my outpatient uh, transplant clinics they are actually taking a risk because if I start skipping the clinics and I end up with further complications which require admission, then they will end up paying some more money than they would have paid for an outpatient clinic. So this is an area that we should clean, uh, we should uh, discuss, Bonanguiai, with uh, NHIF and your board 
and be able to thrash it out. Uh, finally, uh, let me repeat that uh, the issue of post-transplant medication is an issue we have talked about for quite some time. And uh, I liken this to SGR taking you to Mombasa, dropping you at Voi, and telling you to walk the rest of the journey. Then you find, they find you at Mariakani, out of your breath. And instead of taking you to Mombasa, they take you back to Nairobi. Now, what am I talking about? NHIF has paid for my transplant. They will not support me now in, uh, with post-transplant medication. But should I go back to dialysis, they are willing to pay one million shillings per year for me for dialysis. This is a very unfortunate situation. I am sure we can bring our heads together and uh, resolve it amicably. And uh, it shouldn't be like that. And uh, we should be able to do something. Finally, uh, we have some discussions which are going on with uh, NHIF, the patients groups, and the private hospital association in regard to the recently announced reduction of the amount paid by NHIF for dialysis. Uh, we have a deadline set by the CS for Health for those discussions to be complete and con new contracts signed uh, by the end of this uh, month. And I'm sorry to observe that uh, ever since we had a meeting with the NHIF board on uh, 31st of January, we have not had another meeting. We have made inquiries, and I know that NHIF has been uh, engaged in some activities like the UHC lounge that I talked about, but I think uh, time is running out and uh, I'm appealing to Bonanguiai with your board, please let us have this meeting, let us resolve this issue so that by the time the deadline set by the CS comes, we shall have uh, an amicable solution and we shall be able to move forward confidently that uh, kidney patients can continue enjoying a quality uh, health, uh, a quality health and uh, a healthy lifestyle. Thank you very much. Thank you, John. Um, John is very passionate about uh, patient issues and he's, I think, captured most of the issues that affect them. Uh, this week we have celebrated International Women's Day. So it would be very unfortunate to hear from a guy and not from a lady so I want to invite for a very brief chat, Dr. Uh, Ms. Jean Banda. She is also a kidney transplant recipient. Uh, her kidneys failed because of lupus, and she wants to share a brief story of her journey. Karibu. Good morning, everybody. Thank you very much, Dr. Wambogo. My name is Jean Banda. I'm the founder of Kenya Kidney and Lupus Foundation. As Dr. Wambogo has mentioned, my kidneys failed in the year 2000. And I have been a patient from 2000 to date. I did my transplant in 2006. And although I have lupus, and I know many lupus patients are hesitant in going for a transplant because they say, if lupus attacked the kidney, then surely if you transplant it, it will attack that kidney. I would like to encourage all of you to think of getting a transplant, be it that you have lupus, or the cause uh, high blood pressure or whatever. I think a transplant gives one a fairly normal life. And as uh, Gekonyo has said, transplant medication is very expensive and that is what I would appeal for. Uh, transplant patients really need help when it comes to taking the medication. Um, today, being a day after the International Women's Day, I would also like to donate some books. These are health-related. They touch on the different aspects of living with end-stage kidney failure. However, the book is not just for patients. If you get an opportunity to read it, it will benefit, I guess, everybody across the board. It gives us a chance to see this condition from a new lens, a new perspective. What do I mean new? 
imagine, God forbid, if today, because they're testing us here, every single person here is told that they have kidney failure. All of you, even the doctors, life will definitely change. And the label will be the one with the kidney failure. So there are many issues that come up. It's a small book, and I'll donate uh, 200 copies to um, the trustee, Professor Mackley Gale. <laughs> you want to drop here? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah. Okay. 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 Very good, very good, very good. Yeah. And I'd like to add that I authored the books. So please try and get a copy. Thank you very much. Thanks very much, Jean, for your comments and your kind gesture of uh, sharing experiences in a book. Um, we've heard from um, transplant patients, uh, but kidney disease, uh, the conversation on kidney disease will not be complete from hearing from patients on dialysis. And to give us a brief comment on the experiences and any challenges that they may have is one of uh, the representatives or of patients who are on dialysis, Mr. Godric Magoha. Godric, are you around? Ah, uh, Karibu sana. Thank you very much, Doctor. Distinguished guests, all protocols observed, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Godric Makoha. I am a kidney patient currently undergoing um, dialysis. We all gathered here today as we join the rest of the world in celebrating World Kidney Day, a day that has been set aside especially for us all, to reflect on the effects of the kidney diseases to the society as a whole today. As you may be aware, cases of kidney infections are on the rise worldwide, and if not checked, this can easily lead to loss of life. I was diagnosed with kidney disease two years ago, when I went to the hospital for a totally different symptom, I was experiencing uh, frequent blood vision and breathlessness. I did not have any idea that this had anything to do with my kidneys. This I later came to understand that it was because I was hypertensive unknowingly and this situation at hand had an overload to the functionality of both my eyesight and kidneys. This I have since been put see I have since been put on dialysis, which I attend twice every week. Kidney diseases are mostly caused by lifestyle related issues and diets. For example, too much alcohol intake, heavy smoking, too much consumption of red meat and unchecked high blood pressure, high blood sugar levels, diabetes, etc., etc. This, however, should not, be, should not be construed to be a death sentence as kidney patients' life can be elongated by means of frequent dialysis and correct nutritional diet, which I do. It is said that prevention is better than cure. This too applies to kidney diseases. If we all have regular medical checkups 
other than waiting until we feel unwell to go to hospital, then some of, this, some of these causes can be detected early enough and mitigated before they become fully blown renal diseases. The cost and availability of dialysis in our health facilities can prove to be a challenge, especially to those patients who have no steady income and are not enrolled in NHIF scheme. It is therefore our prayer as patients that the concerned authorities may extend these services to all health facilities, more so in the rural areas where sensitization and counseling would be a blessing to a bigger population. I thank you very much for listening and may God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Godric, for your remarks. Um, now, we've heard from the patients, uh, but one group of patients we've not heard from are the children. We always forget about the children. To talk for them, uh, as well as articulate the challenges facing the management of the pediatric patient who has kidney disease, is one of our pediatric nephrologists, who is also a member of the Kenya Renal Association Executive, Dr. Bashir Admani. Doc Karibu. Uh, thank you, the Dr. Wambugu, uh, the head of the Directorate of Public Health, uh, Brigadier Dr. Kuria, um, the chair of uh, NHIF, Honorable Nguyai, uh, KNH Board Chair, Dr. George Oko, uh, CEO of KNH, uh, Dr. Kamuri, uh, uh, Chairman of uh, Kenya Renal Association, Dr. John Gige, uh, all protocols observed, uh, fellow colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, uh, good morning to you all. Uh, it gives me immense pleasure today to talk to you all on this occasion of World Kidney Day. The theme of this year's World Kidney Day is Kidney Health for All. I am a pediatric nephrologist, and I take this opportunity to remind every one of you that children also get kidney diseases. From newborns, where we see acute kidney injuries, obstructive uropathy, uh, to diseases uh, in all the children, where infections and immune diseases lead to renal failure and other implications, if you don't manage them well, these are the patients who end up with end-stage renal diseases by the time they are adolescents. The burden of disease, kidney diseases in children is great, uh, and we see a lot of that in our, in our place uh, in Kenyatta National Hospital. But most of our solutions are actually quite simple. Here at Kenyatta National Hospital, we successfully dialyze even newborn babies using peritoneal dialysis with an impressive success rate of over 90% uh, survival, uh, which we have uh, already published. We are also able to provide chronic dialysis and transplantation services for children, both here and at uh, MTRH. Through research and improvisation, we have been able to reduce the cost of acute peritoneal dialysis, the dialysis fluids for acute kidney injury, by more than 80%. As part of the East African Kidney Institute, and we have uh, Professor Mungai, who is the director of IAKI, we now train nephrologists, nurses, and pediatric nephrologists. Okay, we're talking about uh, bridging the gap of knowledge. We have benchmarked our programs well, and our center now is recognized training center for both International Society of Nephrology, International Pediatric Nephrology Association, and SIU for Urology. And now I can proudly say that we have our very first locally trained pediatric nephrologists who completed training last month. So coming back to the theme, kidney health for all, what do we need to help children? I have always believed that local problems need local solutions. We need to demystify acute dialysis for starters. We need to train doctors and nurses in every county 
so that acute peritoneal dialysis is available and used so that no child dies of acute kidney injury wherever they are in this country. We need to keep on training pediatric nephrologists just the way we are doing with the help of East African Kidney Institute. So eventually all counties should have a pediatric nephrologist or a nephrologist so that uh, children can be assisted. We need to invest in, in research, in local data, re, uh, set up registries which will advise us on our way forward. So we do not depend on data that comes from the West to make decisions uh, for ourselves here in this country. Finally, we need to make kidney transplantation available and affordable for children because this is a population that gets left behind. Remember, children, this is our future. I plead to the stakeholders here and people who make policies that children be supported with post-transplant immunosuppression so that renal survival is prolonged. What we see in children is our results when it comes to post-transplantation initially are fantastic. But later on, as they run out of money and we start say, is, uh, seeing uh, renal survival going down. So to do that, to, provo to promote renal survival in these children, we need to support the post-transplantation medication whether it's NHIF or the government. Remember, at least for, the, for this particular population, I think we need to take that step. Finally, I would like to thank the organizers for asking me to speak today. And I urge everyone here to spread the message uh, that let us all be advocates of kidney health for ourselves and especially our children. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Bashir. Uh, the, 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 the children's voice is often forgotten, but we've always made sure to make their voice heard, even if they are unable to articulate their issues on their own. I would like now to ask uh, Dr. Ahmed Tawahir to come and give a few remarks. Uh, Dr. Tawahir is the immediate former chairman of the Kenya Renal Association. Doc Karibu. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Wambugu. My name is Dr. Twahir. I'm the former chair of the Kenya Renal Association, and uh, I really want to thank the organizers for giving me this amazing opportunity to address such an important gathering. I want to start by recognizing uh, the presence of uh, Brigadier Dr. Kuria from the Ministry of Health, who's representing the Cabinet Secretary, Honorable Louis Nguyayi, Chair of the NHIF, Mr. Owuko, Chair of the KNH, and uh, the CEO of uh, KNH, uh, Dr. Kamuri, uh, Professor Mungai, the Director of uh, East African Kidney Institute, uh, President uh, John Gige, uh, the head of the Kenya Renal Association. Uh, all protocols observed, distinguished guests, patients, colleagues, and also uh, members of the pharmaceutical community who have made uh, this occasion uh, possible. So welcome to this uh, a very important day. This is uh, World Kidney Day is held globally all over the world. And uh, its objective is to create awareness among the community on the importance of kidney disease. Not going to talk too much what my previous, uh, uh, the previous speakers have already said, but what I want to emphasize is that uh, uh, kidney disease is increasing globally. Uh, it's estimated currently uh, that we have 10% uh, of the global population. If we look at Kenya with a population of about 50 million, uh, there are 5 million people with kidney disease. This means from mild to moderate to severe and very advanced. A uh, few of these are on dialysis. Most of them uh, have mild to moderate. Unfortunately, kidney disease is a silent disease. Uh, it is undetectable unless uh, it's quite advanced. So it's very important for you to spread the message out there. When you leave this meeting, go and tell your family members. It's important that you test yourself for kidney disease 
Today there's free screening going on around here. Take an opportunity for those of you who don't know what your kidney functions are, what your blood pressure is, what your blood sugar is, because this could be the important uh, period where you actually can detect whether you are at risk of kidney disease and take measures to prevent uh, kidney disease. And if you're detected with kidney disease and you're detected very early, you can actually uh, institute measures that can reduce the progression of kidney disease. And again, the other important message is if you've had kidney disease and you are on dialysis, the message is uh, all is not lost. Uh, patients with dialysis are doing very well. And uh, the best way of managing a patient with uh, dialysis is to uh, do a kidney transplant. You've heard from uh, uh, two uh, previous speakers how they are doing very well on kidney transplants. So this is the message that I want uh, the audience to hear. But uh, I also want to take an opportunity uh, because we've got some very important guests uh, from the ministry, from the NHIF, uh, just to remind them some of the challenges that we're having uh, in this country and how we can work together to improve and uh, uh, make the universal health coverage that our president has been pushing very much. Uh, one of the challenges we are having is uh, that uh, although the uh, health law was passed in 2017, the regulations have not yet been set forward uh, to see how we can uh, uh, manage these patients with kidney transplantation. So when you go out there to your ministries, please pass on the message that we must fast track uh, these regulations and put uh, in place uh, bodies that can govern kidney transplantation in this country. Uh, the health law of 2017 uh, uh, mentioned deceased donation means that you can get a donation from a dead person. Uh, this is something that has not been practiced in Kenya uh, because the law had not allowed it. Now the law allows it, but the regulations are not in place. So once the regulations are in place, we should be able to uh, be able to increase the number of transplants in this country. And I'm glad the chair of uh, the NHIF, my friend, Honorable Louis Nguyai, is here. I'd less like to uh, commend again what NHIF had done so far to improve the access to hemodialysis in this country. Ten years ago, we only had 500 patients on dialysis in this country. Right now, we have over 6,000 patients on dialysis in this country. I think the NHIF deserves a hand of applause. Let's clap for NHIF. So I'd like on further to remind that this uh, move that the NHIF has done has gone a long way in putting Kenya in the world map. Globally, Kenya is used as an example of the success that uh, kidney patients are having on hemodialysis. So it's something that we have to be proud of. And as we are going along to negotiate uh, with the stakeholders on the price reductions, let's remember this is a story that we want to keep on uh, talking uh, for the rest of our lives. And we want Kenya to continue being a shining example uh, to the global community. A lot has already been said, so I'm going to uh, uh, wind up there and just wish you all uh, uh, happy uh, World Kidney Day, and please take an opportunity uh, to have your self tested to see whether you are at risk of developing kidney disease in the future. Thank you very much. Okay, Santi Sana, Dr. Tawahir. Um, yes, and just in case anyone is unaware, at the tents at the back screening is ongoing on a continuous basis, you will realize that uh, from all the speakers who have spoken before, uh, one of the commonest issues with uh, kidney disease is uh, not knowing that you are suffering from one of the risk factors. So half the people walking around are hypertensive and they have no idea. So always take the opportunity to uh, get tested. It's uh, free of charge and we'll be able to guide you uh, in case anything is found that is untoward. Um, I would like now to ask one of the trustees for Kenya Renal Association, Professor Seth McLegel, who has taught many, many of us 
uh, he's uh, one of the fathers of nephrology in this country and he continues to be very active uh, in training and uh, treating all our patients. Prof, karibu sana. Hello, hello. Habari zenu? Ryan, ladies and gentlemen, our chief guests, all our guests, Mr. Nguyai, who is not there, we almost had tea with him. Dr. Kuria from the ministry. Ah, you are there. We almost had tea with him this morning. Dr. Kuria, who is representing the ministry. Ooko, who is our boss here. I appreciate the presence, or I saw him there, our CEO, our president of the Kenya Renal Association. Remember, nobody is allowed to use that term president, but we call him the president of Kenya Renal Association. Fellow doctors, nephrologists, my patients, thank you very much for attending this function. I know that the, the theme for this meeting is kidney health for all. The only thing that we are not getting correctly is that the second part of it talks of a gap in kidney health education and in kidney literacy. You have heard my patients talk. They are talking like real doctors. You, you heard John talk, and that is as good as anybody can be, meaning that we have taught them about kidney medicine. We are communicating. You have heard some of the health care's talk my own president, Dr. Tuahir, and you have heard them talking about the kidneys very sufficiently, meaning that we have passed the knowledge to them. There are some groups that we need to educate about kidney health a little bit more, and these are our policy makers. I'm sorry, Mr. Nguyai, you fall into that group. Dr. Kuria, we need to educate you more in these issues. And another big group which needs to be educated, and we have been trying to do that, is actually the community. We need to educate our community about kidney health because this is the only way we can make the diagnosis earlier and institute preventive measures. You have heard what we are capable of doing in Kenya. I used to travel to big countries, Britain, United States of America. I went to Asia. They're doing very good work. For a long time now, I've been traveling to African countries and it is important to tell you that we are much way ahead as far as treating kidney diseases, diagnosing and treating is concerned. Kidney health for all, previously we didn't even have specialists who are treating kidney diseases in children. Now you have heard we have very many so we are moving ahead. I want to mention a few things which might be in interesting. Cadaveric kidney transplantation, which has been mentioned, we have been struggling for almost 20 years. I know you are looking at me and you think I'm, I'm still very young. It is just a vision, but we have been fighting over that for almost two, 20 years. Kidney people generally, the world over, and in Kenya, not people to joke with. You have heard of, most of my patients have been on dialysis, 
at the moment we are, we are at a stage of thinking about wearable artificial kidneys, kidneys which you can just put in your pockets, like mobile phones. So we are very serious people. Those of you who read Taifa Leo, is it Taifa Leo or Nation? You must have heard some of us elsewhere in the world putting in genetically modified kid pig, kid, pygmy kids into a patient. It was working very well. If you read the paper today, some of you don't read papers. We lost the patient on Monday, but the kidney had worked for quite some time. So a lot of research is still going on around kidney disease. Lastly, I need to mention, and this is actually very serious, us as the Kenya Renal Association, our major work is advocacy so that our government, the people we live with, our community, contribute to us the advancement of this specialty. And this we shall not stop for as long as we continue to exist. As I end, I'm happy to see many of my patients around. I'm happy to see our visitors. I'm happy to see my colleagues around. At the moment, I need to mention this, when I started practicing this thing, the only kidney unit in this country was at Kenyatta National Hospital. Now I'm happy that in Nairobi alone, we have about 100 dialysis units. And I know that we have units in all of our counties. I talked about targeting the community. It is not something for the future. We have already started traveling to the various parts of the country. The other day I was in Longisa and Narok with a group of doctors and nurses. The other day I was in Embu, Meru, Isiolo. The other day I was in Voi. So we are, we are actually moving to the community and we shall pass the messages there. So don't think we are just based in Kenyatta here. Thank you very much. Nakaribuni. Thank you, thank you very much, Prof. Um, now, you've heard Professor talking about the growth of renal services in the country, uh, but to treat kidney disease requires you to go to spend a lot of years in school learning these trades. And for a long time, like for Professor and some of us, we were forced to go out of the country to learn how to be nephrologists. Now, this has since changed and there is now something called the East African Kidney Institute, which is now training homegrown nephrologists, urologists, nephrology nurses. And I think it's a very important uh, for Kenyans to hear a little bit from them. And to give this small talk will be the director of IAKI, Professor Peter Mungai, who is a consultant urologist and transplant surgeon, and really a honorary member of KRA. Prof. Karibu sana. Uh, thank you, Benjamin. Um, the CEO of Kenyatta National Hospital, Dr. Kamuri. The board chair for, of the Kenyatta National Hospital, Dr. Oko. One of my former students, Brigadier Kuria. I think he's gone somewhere. Um, uh, Dr. Twahir, the immediate KRE chair, and the transformed now um, president of the Kenya Reno Association. Dr. Bashir Athmani, my colleague at the Institute and the University. The colleague who has just spoken, Professor McRigio, with whom I've worked along 
all these years, doctors, patients, and all who take care of these patients that we are talking about, all protocols observed. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Today is a special day. I think we've stood here many times over and over talking about kidney patients. And many of those occasions happening every year, we've had our patients with us, and today was no exception. Dr. Gekonyo, uh, Mr. Gekonyo and the, the lady, our transplant patient, makes us feel proud. And I'll give you a short story of my relationship with this fraternity. In 1991, when I was employed as a lecturer at the University of Nairobi, the transplant program had restarted in this country. But before then, when I was a young man as a medical student, I saw one patient who could not be dialyzed in this country. He came in renal failure. He was working in our national treasury. He went to UK to dialyze. And for those who have heard this story, he came back in a box. And that was extremely frustrating, and that is 1980. So from 1980 to us dialyzing in the entire country is a big milestone, and I do not think there is another disease for which we've been so successful in this country. Perhaps only in the immunization sector have we been so successful. But kidney diseases have been and are always difficult to treat, and so in 1992, I was involved in transplantation. And this marks my 30th year in transplantation from when we started with a transplant of a lady who was a student at the better campus of the University of Nairobi, who the principal came to ask us for money to contribute for her transplantation. And we said, silver and gold we don't have, but the hands to do it, we do. And she was transplanted in December here in Kenyatta National Hospital. And today she is a professor in the College of Agriculture from that time in 1992. So those are the things that we can do. She still has her graft, and she is a working graft. And that, those are the milestones that we've been able to achieve. But this achievement has come as a result of relationships and particularly understanding each other, ourselves, our patients, and having created a culture of caring. Being your brother's keeper has been our biggest success today. And I'll start with a few things that we continue to transplant and we still do. And now, six hospitals in this country are doing kidney transplants from having no dialysis some 40 years ago. This is a big milestone, and I think other than South Africa and the, North Africa, the North African countries, no other country in the south of the Sahara and north of the Limpopo has been able to do this. So as Kenyans, clap for yourselves. But to help that, about 2010, we started saying our patients need to have an exit strategy for dialysis, from dialysis. And this is where Mr. Guyai, who is from where I come from, I come from Kikuyu, he may not have known. Um, we started asking, can NHIF do something? Can NHIF do something for this country? And in a few years, they came on and started paying for transplantation. That's what they paid for first. And then we said, can you pay for dialysis? And that they have been able to do and we are very happy for you and your board, Mr. Guyai, for what you have done for this nation. Around that same time, in about 2014, this country identified kidney diseases as one of the biggest gaps that we have. It was then that the East African community had decided to, as a way of improving the health care of people in East Africa, to set centers of excellence for training 
research and service in the East African region. Kenya chose kidney diseases, urological and nephrological problems as the main stumbling block to healthcare in Kenya. And this you can see. For majority of patients who die, and you and I shall all die, eventually renal disease is the one that precedes the failure of the heart. So once your kidneys are gone, the heart then gives up and you're done. So we identified that as a country, and in a meeting of the East African community partner states, heads of state, it was agreed that we should have a center of excellence in each of our six East African community partner states. And Kenya chose the East Africa Kidney Institute as a way of developing services for our country, of being able to do research and be able to train. But then we had very few nephrologists. And we had thematic areas that we had identified that were most important. One, in terms of training, we needed to train nephrologists, we needed to train urologists, we needed to train nurses, particularly those three. Thereafter, we were going to train other areas in nutrition, we were going to train in pharmacy, we were going to train in counseling, and so on and so forth. Around that same time, the government of Kenya, as it is today, had chosen to, through a program called the MEAs, to try and start dialysis all over the republic, roll out dialysis in the republic. And us as an institute, we were asked then, we had just been formed, to start a program, a preceptorship program, to train for dialysis in the entire republic. And that we did, and I'm proud to report today the trainees span the entire 47 counties of this uh, republic. So with that, we were able to start a dialysis in whatever form that it was. The dialysis has been going on in all those centers. And I was happy last week when I went to Meru as an external examiner in one of the universities to see some of the people who were trained to run those dialysis centers, running a very useful dialysis program. But that is just the beginning of it. And Professor McRigio has talked about having gone all over the country to see what is happening there. We need a research on the impact of, yes, those training, and particularly the impact of the NHIF program. What is the social impact? What is the health impact on the people of Kenya of the rolling out of the dialysis services? This has been huge, and Dr. Tuahil, Ahmed Tuahil mentioned that we're now dialyzing close to 7,000 patients. We need to ask ourselves, therefore, what is the end game for the 7,000 dialyzing patients? What is the end game for the Christines of 1992 when she came to the Department of Surgery for the principal to ask for help? Who are the principals asking for the help for the 7,000 patients who need to have transplantation as an exit strategy. There are many facets to this. The first facet to this is to identify people to train. People to train so that we can offer these services. In 2015, we started the urology program, and now we have a Master's of Medicine in Urology program that is running in the Department of Surgery to train urologists. So we shall not have a shortage of that. We started a program in renal nursing, both at the preceptorship, the, uh, the diploma, and the, um, the master's level. That is also running. We started, for the first time in this region, a program to train nephrologists, and we are now training adult nephrologists. Thereafter, and Dr. Uh, Bashir has said, we started training in pediatric nephrology. So we've actually covered all areas of this, and now, starting 2022, we have a PhD program spanning all those areas of training. As a result of doing that, we get international recognition. Uh, Dr. Bashir mentioned that we are now recognized by the major training institutes of the world as a center of excellence where people can be trained. And we've interviewed and are training people from the entire African region in those areas. So that facet of training is going to be entrenched. But where is the funding for this training going to come from? 
Some of those societies provide funding for our trainees. The, uh, the ISN, the IPN, and the SIU would provide training. So we will have to adapt ourselves to that. But the big thing is how do we deal with those trainees and how do we make sure that these training programs cover the entire republic and indeed the East African region. We shall need to look at those hospitals. And when I was in Meru last week, I was asking myself, why can't me as Mungai and, and Makrigeo and John Gigi go to Embu and show them how to do a transplant and take our trainees there. So they have various areas too. That is food for thought. So our students should go and learn, and learn in these areas of difficulty. I was very impressed by the Reno unit I found in Meru because it is similar to the Reno unit we had in Kenyatta National Hospital when I came back from training in the UK in 1996. So we can imagine Meru, Kisumu, Mombasa being such institutes being such places where we can train our people. And I look at NHIF as a bigger player in this. NHIF can provide the funds required for this training. We've got to put our resources together and get that which it takes to make Kenya different. I think NHIF has that capacity and we should do it. This facet is going to be overcome by the goodwill of the people of Kenya and I'd ask Kenyans of goodwill to help establish a fund that can train nurses, nutritionists, physicians, and all such people in these areas that we so much need. I could tell you, the kidney disease is not for that person. The kidney disease could be for you. And a lot of people I have known who were very normal, who were treating patients with such problems, have ended up with the problem themselves. I have a colleague in the Faculty of, of Health Sciences who last week told me, you know, Dr. now I have been diagnosed with renal failure. This is a doctor amongst ourselves. And there are many doctors who are dialyzing. There are many nurses who are dialyzing. There are many politicians who are dialyzing. So it will not escape any one of you. So let us provide for the training of the people who will take care of us. Now, the next facet is of organs for those patients who need transplantation. If we have close to 7,000 patients, and as NHIF rolls out this transplant program, or this dialysis program, we're going to have even more patients who require transplantation, especially the younger one who have a longer... Tr and our physicians didn't tell you, dialysis is very good. It works out very good. But I was listening to Dr. Uh, Wambogo the other day in class on Monday as we were talking. He's narrating to our students that, you know, you have a 1 in 20 chance of dying while you're dialyzing every year. So dialysis is very good, but a lot of our patients are lost during dialysis. And the transplantation is a very important exit strategy for patients who are dialyzing. Some patients who have been transplanted have their grafts fail. They need organs. In the old days, people had families of 8, 10, 15, 16. So you've had, had a very big variety of, of a very big choice of people from whom to choose who can donate for you. This was good, but today, many of us have two children. And the diseases that will make your kidneys fail will be in the family. So we may not be able to get organs from your relatives. And when your kidneys fail, we may not be able to get from your relatives. We could think of doing it from your friends, but when you do it from your friends, sometimes you pay, sometimes you can even go and knock somebody down so that you can get the graft. Indeed, this has happened in the world. We can even abduct you, go remove your kidney and give somebody else. Those are the ethical issues that prevent us from using the kidneys willy-nilly. So the life unrelated transplantation of what we would call best of friends needs a regulatory framework. We need a regulatory framework for kidney transplantation in this country, for the living. It's even more complicated for the dying and for the dead. The disease donor program, which three or four of my previous speakers have talked about. How do we streamline our disease donor program without compromising our ethics? The law, like Ahmed Twahil said, does not 
exclude us from doing or prevent us from doing kidney transplantation from dead people. And indeed, the first transplant in this country was done in that way in 1978. But how do we make sure that it is ethical, that it is that grafts will not only be given to those who are rich and such as the privileged people, and that it is used for everybody. And who's going to fund this? The best people to fund the NHIF is the NHIF. I believe, Mr. Guya, you must have been told this, and we talk with Osoro every so often, and we have formed a small committee amongst the medics and others to look at how we can operationalize and we can push the legislators into getting the disease donor program working for us. The disease donor program elsewhere have, made, have two approaches to it. We can decide that you can choose to give your kidneys when you die and other organs, or you can, we can take it from you if you didn't say you don't want to give. Obviously, we must start from the easier position, and the disease donor program will have very many ways we shall have to look at. And most important of that is to decide when are you dead so that we can take your kidney away. The when are you dead is an important question that this committee will need to tell us so that we know that you are dead and we can take your organs. Whether you had given your graft is a different question that we shall have to address. It's an important research question that we need to find out from the people of Kenya. Do you want to opt in, that is you decide that you want to give your graft, or do you want to opt out that you decide you cannot be the one to donate your organs. There are a lot of young people, not that it is nice, but we know a lot of our young people die on the roads, particularly the ones who His Excellency the President was talking about the other day, the border border riders. They are the people who uh, fall off their bikes and they let the bike continue uh, on the road and they are left on the road and they will come and they'll be dead. And so many other people, the young people who unfortunately drive at next breathneck speed on Friday nights on the southern bypass and they end up rolling, we can pick them, get their kidneys, uh, and use it for other people. While advising them that that lifestyle is not a good lifestyle. So we can use a lot of this. We can even find people who have diseases that are unrelated to the kidneys. And before these people die, we can use all this. We can help a lot of people. Yesterday, the transplant that we did in Kenyatta National Hospital was for somebody who's, who has many complications, a heart problem, a lung problem, and yet today that graft is functioning very well. So we can take those diseased or those people who are dead or are dying, and we use that for the patients in our transplant centers. For those who do not know the East Africa Kidney Institute, you find a building that is coming up between the traffic area, Kenyatta National Hospital Mochari, and Gong Road. That is the East Africa Kidney Institute. And my hope and prayer, and I want Mr. Nguyai to promise this if he can, we would want that when it is opened between April and August this year, we should be able to do a diseased transplantation there. Latest let us give ourselves a goal. Latest end of this year, we must be able to do a disease donor transplant at the institute. Then we can be taking people from all over the country and doing that. I hope Dr. Guyai, Mr. Guyai can be able to help us come with a program on how this can be done. I have a long story. I don't want to go on forever because I'll keep you um, only looking at me and wondering whether I'm going to finish. But the one thing I want us to do the one thing I want us to do as we do that is conduct research. Identify for ourselves who are the people who are going to renal failure. At the moment, Benjamin can tell you, a lot of our patients come and we say we don't know why they went into kidney failure. If we don't know, we can probably find out by doing research why this happens. And if this happens, we can probably stop, if not all of them, a significant proportion of them from going into end-stage kidney disease, or correcting those who are sick in from going into end-stage kidney disease. That can attract grants from all over the world, and I'm pleased to, to report it, that we are getting some small grants on how to conduct research. Our National Research Fund can put some money into that so that we are able to research and find out how we can help our people. Once we have 
done our research, we've done our training, and we have offered service. We shall have given Kenyans that for which they spent so much money on us to train. We believe our national government and our county governments will be responsive to this request. Because I have had one major challenge. The national government has been very helpful in getting people to come and train. But the county governments have been very reluctant. And I'm mentioning here on this podium deliberately. The county governments do not want their people to come and train. They refuse to pay for their people to come and train, yet they want people to go and work for them. Who is going to pay for this training? Please, governors, the CECs, please release some of your people to come and train. Even when we offered this training for free, some of them were reluctant to send people to come and train. Understand that bringing the care of patients to your doorstep is a responsibility of both the national government and the uh, county or the devolved units, county government. So that is the request I would have, I'd ask for Kenya. I would ask Kenyans to ask their governments to sponsor trainees, to sponsor patients, and uh, lastly, to do research. This way, ladies and gentlemen, we will have changed how this country runs. This way, we will change not just the renal diseases, which is what we have already done, but we will change all those others. I'll tell you a last thing as we finish. As part of IAKI, we bought some equipment for purposes of tissue typing and tissue cross match for kidney transplantation at the institute and placed it in the, and in the hospital. Little did we know that there will be something called Corona COVID. That is the machine now we've been using at the Kenyatta National Hospital for that. So it is important we improve our resources. And lastly, it is have a system that educates our people on these diseases, how to prevent them, how to cure them when you have, and how to take care of these patients when they are sick. Thank you very much. God bless you. Um, thank you very much, Prof. Um, very important remarks, uh, looking, taking us from the past and looking into the future. I can see you're getting tired. I promise after the next speaker, we'll have a brief, very brief one, two minute interlude so that we can stretch a little bit, then we come now to the policymakers. But I must allow uh, this next person to talk. Uh, every kidney patient will tell you it will, life would be impossible without the contribution of uh, nephrology nurses. They are really the anchor that guides their care. And without them, we, none of us would succeed in whatever it is we are trying to do. So to speak on their behalf is the chair of the Kenya Nephrology Nurses Association, who is also a transplant coordinator here in KNH, uh, Madam Nancy Wangombe, karibu sana. Good morning, everyone. Uh, all protocols observed. Uh, I will take this opportunity to give my speech. And as the last speaker of this speech session, I have one disadvantage that uh, everything has been covered. Number two, I should not repeat what has been said by anyone, but uh, I, I, I'll repeat the, the theme. Kidney health for all, bridging to better the, the kidney care. Uh, as a chairperson of the Kenyan Nephrology Nurses Association, we have seen it grow, and currently we have over 700 renal trained nurses distributed across the country and in the private dialysis centers. Uh, and with the, uh, with the number of patients being around 6,000 and the dialysis centers being 230, that means that this number is still small for nurses to be able to cover the whole spectrum of prevention of kidney disease. Because most of these nurses are placed in the dialysis units or where they are offering the direct uh, renal replacement therapies, that is dialysis and transplantation. And for this, this hospital in itself, we have like 60 nurses and even then, uh, the, the management of the, of, the, of the nursing will tell you the number is still not enough. Then that means we have a gap in prevention of the kidney disease. We have no nurses who can be distributed to cover the whole spectrum from, pre uh, from the prevention 
to the stages of kidney disease. We are only uh, positioned at the end. And uh, I, would, I would want to give this statement that uh, the association will use this day as a platform to launch our education program to some of our nurse, to one of our nurses who works in our hospitals, eh? With, in all our institutions, uh, to have a celebration in September. We normally have a, a nephrology nurses week. It's a week that is, that's observed by the American Nurses Association where it is dedicated to the nephrology nurses and we can use that chance to educate the nurses uh, distributed in the different departments like the critical care units, the medical department, the surgery and the obstetric because that is where we have risks of patients progressing to kidney disease. We partner in them, we, we come up with a common message that will be able to trickle down to our patients and their relatives as they come for their different uh, kidney cares that we have around. And of the group, as we, as we join what we are, the conversation that is about the disease donor program, the same group of nurses would be very inf uh, uh, instrumental in talking, beginning the conversation about the disease donor program. Because if it is new to them, you can imagine what it will be to the general public. And uh, we may need to say that uh, the nurses have more contact time with the patients than the rest of the healthcare workers. That is why it would be very good that we begin that conversation with them. And by September, we'll, we'll, we, we will have like commemorated the whole work of the uh, program of the theme of bridging the gap to better kidney healthcare by increasing the knowledge with our nurses. Asante Nisana. Thank you very much, Nancy. Uh, so, as promised, band, come and get this guest stretched out. See, Brigadier is getting stiff and cold. Just for two minutes, then we'll resume the speeches. Karibu. Mark Legeo like dancing. I don't know what you're going to do. Dr. Gige, to me, like an extra meal. I'm a dad. Now it's a Alright, ladies and gentlemen, I know uh, medics like things. Nini, tafadhali busi mameni kidogo. Mameni kidogo, munyoroke. Munyoroke kidogo. Kila mtu wa simame tafadhali. Step out of the tent. Step out of the tent. Thank you. So we're gonna do So to turn a western one, to turn a western one. To turn a western one. Kuna watu kutoka western hapa? Ama tuende kwa... Tuende kwa... Kwa na walu. Tuende huku, tuende huku, tuende huku. We'll find space, we'll find space. Step out, step out, step out. Come and shake some some shoulders. Let me step here as well. Dr. Ngige. <laughs> Professor Mark Ngige. Kuja na uyo. All right, let's go. Let's start. Twende. Hey, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. 
Alright, so we'll carry on with the program. Um, to invite uh, the chairman of uh, KNH, um, I would want to recognize the presence of the senior director of clinical services just to come and invite, say hi, and invite the chairman of KNH to make his remarks. Uh, Dr. Irene Inwani, karibu sana. And then you will invite Dr. Mr. Jojo Oko to come and talk to us. Karibu. Uh, our invited guests, colleagues, uh, members of the third estate, our patients, our partners, all protocols observed. Good morning. Is it morning? No, it's afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, we've been given the rules not to repeat what has been said before, especially by my uh, seniors. Uh, I would like to take this opportunity once again to welcome you to Kenyatta National Hospital and to thank you, thank the ministry, to thank all the organizers for choosing to come and celebrate this uh, important day in Kenyatta National Hospital. We don't take it for granted, and uh, we appreciate for all the support that has been uh, provided. We have been uh, told about the gaps that we are about to bridge, and we should work uh, on bridging. Uh, in the legal framework, 
in the policies that we are to implement in education, in the way we provide care, in prevention. Uh, mine is very small, and I am saying if we do not close the tap, we will not be able to attain kidney health for all. We need to refocus. We need to actually direct our health financing despite the challenges to prevention. Uh, we will be very happy to have five, 10 patients in that new kidney institute if we can focus all our efforts in prevention. So let us close the tap, but let us be able to adequately take care of those who have missed the train. So thank you very much. I'd like to take this opportunity uh, to invite the chair of the KNH board, uh, Mr. George Oko, to come and give his uh, remarks. Welcome, Dr. Uh, Mr. Oko. Uh, thank you, Dr. Inwani. Um, Dr. Francis Kuri representing uh, the CS, uh, our Chief uh, Admin Secretary, Dr. Masi Mangangi, uh, Chairman of NHIF, my friend uh, uh, Mushimua Lewis Nguyai, uh, Dr. John Gigi, Chairman of uh, the Kenya Renal Association, and uh, Professor Peter Mungai uh, from the East African Institute, Kidney Institute, uh, distinguished uh, guests, uh, the Kenya Renal Association, uh, patients, uh, the renal fraternity. Uh, good afternoon. Um, I've listened very carefully to what has been said, and uh, I'm humbled. Um, so I also will not repeat what has been said. I actually just want to say uh, uh, three or four things. Uh, first of all, um, as chairman of uh, KNH, very pleased. This is my second um, World Kidney Day celebration. And I'd like to challenge uh, the association, Dr. Ngigi, that um, next year, if possible, uh, we have this uh, celebration outside uh, Nairobi. So that one year you do it in Nairobi, another year you do it outside. And I've listened to what Professor McLegeo said about what they are doing, visiting the other centers, and also I heard from uh, Professor Mungai. So it's, I'm very passionate about this thing of taking medicine um, to us, KNH, as a training institute, make sure that we are developing uh, these uh, spe specialties outside. Um, and as um, somebody in my role, uh, you know, these are things we do for a, um, a short while, you know, when you're given the responsibility. And really, the, the thing is to try and make sure that we improve things and move, move it uh, forward. And I'll tell you a story. Um, I don't know how many of you, uh, the old people remember, but I don't know if, if the young fel fellows remember uh, Mr. Lotodo. Anybody remember Mr. Lotodo? Uh, good. Uh, Mr. Lotodo was a, a Minister for Home Affairs. And uh, in Kenya, there's a strange phenomenon. If you're a Minister for Home Affairs, you're in charge of prisons. Yeah? And for a strange reason, very many Ministers for Home Affairs have gone to prison. At least three of them or four of them. Uh, so normally when, uh, when you're appointed Minister for Home Affairs, uh, part of your orientation, you, are, you go and visit prisons. And uh, when they get there, when they get there, when they get there, uh, any comments? I say, ah, Waziri, Tafadali, just try and improve the food, you know? Try and improve. I don't let it have some tea. And, and of course, uh, you know, that time when Moshimiwa, you, you tend to dismiss that, says, ah, forget about that uh, mambo ya chai na sukari. You know, get some discipline. First of all, you'll, you'll get sukari outside there. So, uh, Lotodo, unfortunately, Went for the visit, he refused to improve the tea. Yeah, Subui. Unfortunately, Skumoja Moya Kamfunga, President Moy, for all like activities. 
So of course he went to jail, uh, to a committee. So I can tell you a chair as boy, I got kunywa. Now the inmates are surrounding him, waiting to see what he'll say. I got the chair. I can say, "Hey, I couldn't carry." And all of them burst out laughing. You know, saying, "Allah, you know, we told you to improve these things." Um, so when we are doing uh, the kind of things that uh, uh, we are we are doing, we must make sure that uh, uh, we we improve things because you might need that thing yourself. So Professor Mungai, you must hear your appeal for organs. Uh, you know, and I'd like to make a pledge now to you, Professor Mungai and Dr. Ngige. Uh, I'm hoping for a long life and I want to live long, but Professor Mungai says that we'll all die. Uh, so when I die and uh, I'm confirmed dead, you don't come immediately. <laughs> you will wait some time. And Dr. Ngigi must confirm that indeed I'm, I'm told sometimes people die and then they, they come back, eh? like some footballers when I'm quite revived. So when, when I die, you can come for my for my kidney and make good use of it uh, somewhere else. Uh, you know, once uh, that is uh, uh, confirmed. Um, the other thing uh, I've noticed about this fraternity, this speciality, um, it's very well organized. These nephrologists, um, both at Kenyatta, at the university, um, and now at the institute, and I've just followed uh, what they have done in terms of uh, developments. I remember um, as a teenager a long time ago hearing about the transplant uh, done by Dr. Wari, and I was, that thing has always stuck in my head. So I'm, I'm very proud about what has been accomplished by the nephrologists and how it has developed. Yeah? So as a hospital, and as, as chairman of the hospital, I, I pledge my support to ensure that we continue to develop and we continue to improve uh, things. But uh, the speciality is very organized. And I also want to challenge again uh, the director of the institute, Professor Mungai, as well as Mac Professor Magligeo, Dr. Ngigi, and their friends, Dr. Wambugo. Uh, I like history being captured. And I'd like to challenge you that we actually capture the development of nephrology in Kenya uh, you know, in, in a book from the very first stage up to now, maybe in periods, so that more for a lesson eh, for other specialities and for other disciplines. Can we do that so that it can be a lesson to other specialities and other disciplines in medicine in this, uh, in this country and also an inspiration? Lastly, um, I began my life um, in, bus in, in, in business, uh, in marketing. That's what I, I trained in. And then went into banking and now I'm in the medical uh, field. And uh, in, in, uh, in marketing, my specialty was uh, branding and positioning. It's a very powerful tool. Yeah? And to me, it seems like uh, uh, the Kenyan nephrologists, the institute, has an opportunity to really brand that Kenya, uh, National Hospital, the university, the institute, is a world leader in nephrology. That needs to be really branded in the region, in Africa, in the world. Yeah? And also to aim to be there. Yeah? I think that the trajectory is very, very good. And you'll tell us what else is required for us to, to be absolutely world class in nephrology. But it seems to me that the elements have come together so well. So uh, I think the world should know, uh, Africa should know, the region should know that for nephrology, you come to Kenya, you come to Nairobi, you come to these institutes and Kenya, and your problem will be sorted. Um, and I've also learned that uh, in terms of outcomes, uh, this is an area where now uh, the outcomes for the transplants uh, in uh, KNH actually compare very, very well with the ones from uh, India. Um, so, uh, and the outcomes is a uh, uh, what the patient rep uh, uh, said, uh, John, about, uh, you know, that's from the time he underwent that uh, transfer up to now, many, many years. So uh, that's my challenge to you, to, to you uh, as a community of uh, speciality, that we, we, uh, the branding, the positioning. Uh, I think all the elements have come together. I've, I would have nothing else uh, to add. And um, in my role as a uh, chairman, 
I'll use my time to provide support and to pro provide support uh, to our patients, uh, to uh, anybody who comes uh, our service, but more importantly, uh, to our policymakers, uh, Dr. Mwangangi, uh, Dr. Kuria, and my friend uh, uh, Lu Dr. Louis uh, Nguyai, that you know we really help provide support uh, for this specialty to continue to develop and uh, to provide um, services uh, to all these uh, wonderful people uh, who need uh, uh, the services. So, asante sana and uh, karibuni, and um, I'm really enjoying uh, listening and just uh, I'm wowed by where this has reached and where it came from and where it seems to be uh, to be going. Very proud uh, of, of uh, happy to be here to celebrate uh, the World Kidney Day. Asanteni. Sante Sana, uh, Chair of the KNH Board. And I can confirm that uh, we always feel your, yours as well as the senior management's role in enabling the renal unit and the renal department serve uh, our patients. Now, throughout the speeches, I'm sure you've all noticed that every, each and everyone who's spoken has mentioned NHIF, 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 and kidney disease cannot be delinked. It's too late for that now. They have changed lives, they have saved lives. You heard what Dr. Tawahir said that before the NHIF reimbursement program started, this country only had 300 patients on dialysis. As we speak today, we can say about 6,100 patients are currently on dialysis. Uh, I can tell you that not, not much has changed in terms of the risk and the burden of disease. The only thing that can be attributed, the change can be attributed to, is one, the expansion of dialysis services by the government through the MES program, and two, most importantly, is the introduction of NHIF reimbursement. Hemodialysis treatment is very expensive, extremely so. Gikonyo used the word, it can be economically catastrophic to any family. So NHIF's role is really key, and we are really proud of them, and we really value their, their intake, their, their input into this uh, area of care. We, we know a lot of you is asked of you, and we'll continue to ask much more of you, because everything you do eventually ends up impacting on patients' uh, well-being and saving lives. So ladies and gentlemen, please uh, join me uh, in inviting the chair of NHIF, and we are very happy that he took the time to join us in this event. Mr. Louis, Honorable Louis Nguyai, Karibu Sana. Uh, thank you very much, um, the Chief Administrative Secretary for the Ministry of Health, Masi Mwagangi. Uh, Brigadier Francis Kuria from the Ministry, uh, my friend and Chairman of KNH, George Ooko, um, the Chairman of the Kenya Renal Association. Now there are two KRAs. Huh? I kept on when he first said KRA. I kept on thinking, hey, did he become a commissioner? Then I realized there's the Kenya Renal Association. So I think I will have to find a way of emphasizing K renal, K R. -E -R. I don't know. So Dr. John Gige, East African Kidney Institute Director, Professor Peter Mungai, patients led by my friend uh, Gikonyo, the ones who did the testimonials, the fraternity of uh, Kenyatta National Hospital, distinguished guests, all protocols observed. I think first, I want to say thank you very much for being invited. This is my first time in the World Cancer Day celebration. And it's a situation where, as you've heard, NHIF has been mentioned a lot. So I just want to probably demystify NHIF and its role because of late it has been having accolades in local sittings like this and bashings in the media, and I think 
it's important to really get to know what NHIF is, what role it plays, and who we are, and what is our calling in as far as the country is concerned. First and foremost, um, NHIF was given the role of being the flag bearer for universal health coverage, which is one of the four pillars for the agendas that the president wants to leave in his legacy. And uh, for it to do that, it had to transform. And for that transformation, it looked at four areas. One was legislation. And now we have the new amended NHIF bill act, which transformed NHIF from National Hospital Insurance Fund to National Health Insurance Fund. And now we are in the process of amending all the regulations so that we can be able to deliver universal health coverage. Universal health coverage, in essence, means that every Kenyan should be able to, aff uh, to access quality, affordable health care without suffering financial loss. And as such, NHIF steps in for all people who become members so that when they, have a when they have a sickness, that sickness, particularly if it has a huge financial burden, they're not able to suffer financial loss uh, because of it. So in terms of legislation, we now have transformed NHIF, and now we're having regulations that will require all Kenyans to contribute something into their pocket and we are having stakeholders discussions as we speak. And one of the things that has been happening, there's been this discourse and this discussion between particularly the Federation of Kenya Employers and the COTU, the workers' representatives, on one, should, how much should be contributed towards health care. Now, the world standard is for you to be able to enjoy health coverage, it's normally 10% of your income to enjoy total universal health coverage. Our proposition has been and has been passed uh, and is going into the regulations 1.7% for the employee and an equivalent for the employer, which is 3.4%, which means if you look at where we sit, there is still another 6.4 percent, yeah, 1.4, 1 that 3.4, so another 6.6 percent that needs to be covered and that needs to be taken care of if we would get to the world standard that is given by UN. So I think it's important for us as we take this debate forward we look at the milestones that have been achieved by where NHIF has come from and what milestones we want to achieve so that we can ensure that everybody can enjoy health coverage. And we've heard a lot of uh, explanations here on how it has transformed. And just to give you a bit of statistic, in the year 2020 to 2021, our total payout for health coverage was 54 billion. Of that, the total payout for renal and for dialysis payout was 3.84 billion, totaling to 7.1% of the total of the expense benefits, being the fourth most expensive uh, benefit for the fund. At uh, the same time, we were able to do 285,000 dialysis. Now, those 285,000 dialysis, I can tell you for a fact, is that probably 95% of them would not have been successful if NHIF hadn't existed. Now, this is a journey that we want to take. We want to take a journey where we want to make sure that it's not only in the renal, it's not only in the oncology, it's not only with the issues that are coming up 
including the new diseases that are coming up, that NHIF should have the capacity to deliver. But for us to be able to do that, we have to partner with the government, who have been so kind. They've now put in one million non-affording, and are intending to put in another one million non-affording families so that universal health coverage can be achieved. In total, because we have the haves and the have-nots, we would want to urge the ones who have to accept to take the burden of contributing 1.7% of their own salaries towards ensuring. And, them, and many times I'm sure they enjoy the, uh, the NHIF benefits plus the employers contributing the extra 1.7%. And it's 1.7 if you're above 100,000. Before that, there are bands that go on with that. And then we also make sure that our families who cannot afford, because the government cannot only be the one that is contributing, you contribute 500 shillings per patient. Now, when you contribute that 500 shillings per family, sorry, per month, it's 6,000 shillings per year. It's able to pay 1 million shillings for dialysis and now we are really working towards focusing on working towards transplants so that we can reduce the number of patients on dialysis and the second thing that we've done after this is that now we are looking at the benefits packages and what Gekonyo was requesting on ensuring that there is post transplant management, because we're already paying for plant fund, we're also going to include it in that package. So mine is to say congratulations. Um, we will partner with uh, the Kenya Renal Association. We will partner with uh, uh, the Kenyatta National Hospital and all the level six hospitals, both government and non-government. Another item that has been coming on in the press is the issue of that in the regulations, there is a suggestion that chronic illnesses will only be paid for by NHIF to public hospitals. Now, that's just a suggestion. We are still in stakeholders forum. All I want to tell you is that NHIF is following the rules of the Constitution, and there will be no discrimination between private parties and public parties. The contract that we have form two bases. One that is comprehensive, so if the private or the public providers, and I think all the public providers are signing the comprehensive benefits, we pay 100% of the costs that are there. Then there is the non-comprehensive where people want to offer what they call premium services and charge for extra services. The non-comprehensive will be paid exactly as the comprehensive that the patient has to top up. So the patient has to elect whether they want to go to a high premium expensive facility where NHIF pays part of the cost or a comprehensive package. And we've ha been having this discussion and I would want everybody to make a tour of the government facilities that have now been transformed over the last four years. Coast General Hospital, Lothaya Hospital, Kenyatta Hospital, um, uh, there's even, and, and, and many others, because they're all the 24 facilities across for NMS, and see the transformation that has taken place, and see the quality of care that is now even competing with the premium private hospitals. So our role is to make sure that every Kenyan is able to access health care. I, as a chairman, for the time I'll be the chairperson of the board of our management, we will be on that single vision of univer de delivering universal health coverage so that all Kenyans can be able to enjoy health care, not only in renal, oncology, or in diabetes or hypertension. And again, the difference between NHIF and private providers is that we don't have exclusions. I think the biggest risk and challenge that we had was COVID and we've been studying it. And that was the only one that 
we had have to find uh, data and parameters to manage but the rest of the covers are all covered i don't think you see that in the private sector so media support us talk about the good things and weigh them between the good and when you have one small incident let it not be overemphasized let us emphasize the good ones thank you very much god bless you and happy uh, World Cancer Day, and I look forward to ensuring that every Kenyan enjoys healthcare. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> thanks, thanks, uh, uh, Honorable Nguyai, for those uh, remarks. Uh, this is one of the roles of World Kidney Day advocacy. Cancer is very loud, so the kidney gays are often forgotten. Asante Sana from NHIF. So we are moving on well. Um, I want to invite now uh, the head of the Directorate of uh, Public Health in the Ministry, Brigadier Dr. Kuria, to come, our Salimir, and to kindly invite the CAS of Health to make our remarks. Thank you very much, Dr. Rambogo. The Chief Administrative Secretary, Minister of Health, Dr. Masa Mwangangi, the Chairman of the KNH Board of Managers, uh, Mr. George Aoko, the Chair of the Board NHIF, Honorable Rina Skwiai. I met him for the first time today, quite ex exciting. And recognizing, of course, the colleagues in the nephrology and urology uh, specialities, particularly recognizing my teachers here, quite exciting to be sitting in the same tent with my teachers, Professor Mark Rigel and Professor Mongai. I love the enthusiasm that continues to be in this, particularly these two, when the, the first transplant was conducted in this hospital, by the then Professor Mungayus, you remember I was a fifth year medical student and I still recall the excitement that was in the lecture rooms following that successful procedure. And it's interesting that uh, that resistance continues today and the drive that you are pushing in the East African Kidney Institute. You know, last year we attended the EAC Sectoral Council Ministers meeting and I'm happy to record that uh, the IACI is among the few of the centers of excellence that is progressing well. I'm informed that it's accurate 90 percent structural completion and overall we are about 80 percent and hope that be done by, by August this year. A lot has been said here and I'm delighted also as the head of the Director of Public Health. I know there has been references of me representing the CAS, the CAS, but uh, you notice that the Chief Administrative Secretary is around and protocol is there for, he represents the CS Health. But uh, while she was away, a few moments were shared here, especially by colleagues in this society who have suffered kidney disease. I was especially touched by what uh, Mr. Gekonyo said and the gap that is still there in post-transplant care. I think needs to be addressed seriously. And as we stand as policy makers in the ministry and whatever we have done in having the transplant package, the dialysis package, and the overall push to have the UHC policy rolled out is a remarkable progress in those of us who are making policy at the ministry. So we congratulate ourselves as a ministry for this rollout. And we promise, of course, of course, through the cast, we're going to talk about this, to continue working with other stakeholders to ensure that those aspirations of Gikonyo and the like are met eventually. The energy, of course, in our caregivers in this cannot be overemphasized here, and we continue urging them to continue working in the ministry and other stakeholders, as I said, to make this a reality. Notable, of course, is that when we stand in the last two years, we talked about COVID. And I do recall that uh, the figures that we used to give talked of those who had uh, comorbidities and COVID 
having been the victims of morbidity of, of, of death then. And it is remarkable to note that diabetes and hypertension and chronic kidney disease took the biggest toll of those who died of COVID as a complication or, or as a, with the comorbidity as a complication of COVID-19. So this discussion that we are having here is quite interesting and the gap that is being addressed here. And we continue urging, and I have always said this, that the people in front of us, then before, before the state, continue being very, very instrumental in sending out the message. There's a lot of knowledge gap, a big one in the community out there. You talk about diabetes and control diabetes, and the statistics are there. The numbers, the number of people out there who suffer diabetes and who are controlled. It's only about a quarter of them are controlled. And the, the harm it is wreaking on their kidneys is untold of. So you as the Father State, we've always relied on you to make the noise for us. So this gap that is being addressed here today, we urge you to continue making that noise and spread this gospel. And as we celebrate this World Kidney Day, your efforts at this, we probably urge you more, to urge you to more and more be the advocates of this for this uh, other colleagues who are still the tent and who have spoken before us. With those few remarks, allow me then to do what I had been asked to come and do, invite the guest speaker in this uh, ceremony, the Chief Administrative Secretary, Minister of Health, Madam Kass uh, Masimongangi. Uh, Madam Kass, Karibu Sana. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Kuria, and um, thank you to the Kenyan. Let me remove this. However, regulations still stand. I've been seeing a lot of people asking about uh, COVID regulations, whether we're going to stop masking, whether we're going to stop vaccinating. And I think where we are, particularly in this scourge of COVID-19, those measures are still very important. I'd like to appreciate um, all the stakeholders who've come before me today and who've shared their experiences, their words of wisdom, their contributions when it comes to defeating kidney disease in Kenya. I must say, Kenya International Hospital is a trendsetter, particularly when it comes to collaborations towards kidney disease, and I'm especially proud of the Kenya Renal Association, our KRA of kidneys. Dr. Ngigi and his team have done commendable job over time to be able to shine a light here. And much like Dr. Kuria, I must also appreciate the teachers who made me who I am today, Prof. Mark Ligiel, Prof. Mungai, and others who I'm seeing here in the crowd for continuing to put their time, their effort, their dedication, their passion to defeating kidney disease. I'd like to also appreciate NHIF, and particularly the chair of NHIF, I can tell you that we have passion now, we have excitement, we have the motivation to ensure that the UHC dream is realized for all Kenyans. And so I do thank NHI for their contributions in defeating kidney disease. I'd like to appreciate the nurses and particularly Nancy who came and spoke to us on the role that nurses play when it comes to kidney disease. I can say when we project in terms of capacity building in the Ministry of Health and about Nine years ago, at the start of devolution, when I was working in the district, we hardly had the numbers when it came to nephrology nurses. And I'm glad to see that now we even have associations and we have the nurses themselves driving the agenda to ensure more and more capacity is built so that we can serve our patients. I'd like also to thank the teams who work on IAKI. I do remember negotiating for IAKI years ago at the East Africa Community Sexual Council meetings. And I'm glad to hear that now we are at 90% structural completion. There was a time we used to drive down this road and I'd always look to see what's going on in that plot. And really over the past two years, Prof, there's been a lot of action there and I'm really proud of you because there was a time we were worried. But now we are doing well and this is really commendable. And I look forward 
perhaps in the next one or two years to see Kenya celebrated at the East African community, having finalized IAKI and operationalized it. I do thank also IAKI for the work that they've done in terms of capacity building. Today I'm here representing the minister and as I was coming to join you today, I was trying to reflect where are we in terms of kidney disease and what is the message that I should pass on from the Minister of Health today? One, I think for me, particularly as an individual, as a doctor, and as one who's been afflicted in my family with kidney disease, just last year I did have an uncle who passed away, and Dr. Ngege was actually his doctor, and it was, you know, end-stage renal disease and finally renal failure and death. I must say I'm especially, especially grateful for each and every one of you who makes an effort to ensure we, de we defeat this disease. And in that regard, then, the question becomes, where are we in terms of policy? Today I've heard each and every speaker come and share their contribution, their reflection on what we need to do when it comes to policy. And what is clear today is that we need to continue putting more efforts in improving access to kidney health services. A key element, perhaps, that I'm realizing we may have missed out is that of education and awareness in the general population. And I'll surprise you and tell you, yesterday I went for my annual medical checkup. Just right here next to Kenyatta, 40 suits. And when I went there for a checkup, I was surprised to learn that we actually have sodium or salt substitutes in Kenya. Do you know about that, Dr. Ngege? Those of us who struggle with, say, hypertension, and you may be surprised to know that, yes, I am a hypertensive young girl. And my doctor was telling me, why don't you substitute the Ken salts that you use, the Magadi salts that you use, with other alternatives to try and see if we can better manage your hypertension. And when he was talking to me, because I was there with my family, I could see them surprised at, oh, there's actually a lifestyle component. There's actually a preventive promotion component when it comes to managing some of these NCDs. And we were not aware. And I wondered, what have we done particularly when it comes to policy level? Today, each and every speaker that has stood here has talked about what intervention would be needed when things go wrong. We've all gone to the extreme of the disease, when you need the transplant, when you need the dialysis, when you need the post-transplant management when you need the diagnostics. We have not had the discussion today, and even last year when I joined you, we still have not had the discussion on how to prevent us from getting there. And every year I meet the community, every year I meet providers, every year we're engaging with people on this subject, I always ask, who has had their blood pressure measured in the past three months? in the room here today. I can see someone, thank you. Anyone else? Thank you. I'm afraid to ask my teachers, my professors, have we had our blood pressure measured? So there's perhaps a challenge, and, and this I'm putting together for myself as a duty bearer, as a policy maker, but also for the Kenya Reno Association, all societies who are working on this. Perhaps there's an element, there's a programmatic element that we need to look at when it comes to prevention and promotion? And how do we streamline it? And how does our key, key working partner, NHIF, also streamline this when it comes to financing for this disease? I look forward to the day where, one, even as we improve access for UHC, for poor families and ensuring that they are in, uh, registered into the subsidy program, I look forward to the day where in Kenya we will be saying we've all gone for our health checks and that NHIF has stepped in for whatever small component, and this is a progressive journey, for whatever small component that we've stepped in in that light. And so for me, as I look back and as I reflect, seeing that the burden of disease remains an issue that we need to deal with, seeing that access remains an issue that we need to deal with, seeing that risk factors remain an issue that we need to deal with, then perhaps the area that we should focus all as stakeholders in this space, even as we deal with the financing, even as we deal with the cost of care, is to then ask, how do we get to this point? How do patients move from being born, 
having a healthy childhood, getting into adolescence, getting into young adulthood, and then getting to the point where they now need these renal disease services. How do we reduce that number? And I'm sure if we come together, we can definitely come up with impactful programs that would be able to reduce this. As I said earlier in my introduction, in the Ministry of Health, we are passionate, we are proud of the teams who work with us when it comes to kidney disease. And as a ministry, together we've developed and rolled out training materials and clinical the guidelines that touch on various NCDs, particularly diabetes, cardiovascular disease. We've been able to ensure that these guidelines get to the primary healthcare level. We've been able to ensure that countrywide healthcare workers are able to offer basic management and screening for kidney disease, and to ensure that there are also appropriate referral mechanisms. We're working together to ensure that the East African Kidney Institute will be a regional center of excellence, and that it will not only support the quality of care when it comes to service delivery for kidney diseases, but it will also serve as a training and research center. We have made investments as well as government when it comes to the managed equipment service project, and it's played a crucial role. Every time we see a lot of bashing on this project, sometimes much like the plea that has been made by the chair of NHIF, I'll be making the same plea to the members of the fourth estate to always have a balanced view and to be very critical, to actually come and talk to us and get that information when it comes to the success of these projects. Imagine moving from 300 patients to 6,000 on dialysis through the efforts of NHIF, but also through the efforts of government through the Managed Equipment Services Project. And so again, we continue to reform our commitment in providing the infrastructure and in ensuring that those benefits that patients enjoyed, reduced travel costs, reduced time, reduced congestion. I myself have witnessed this in Nyeri, the KNH Annex Center. We went for a supportive visit there last year. And I met an old man who was so, so grateful that we now had a dialysis unit there. And that he used to always have to come to Nairobi, but for the first one, two years, he's been getting his dialysis in Othaya, and he's happy. And that's what we want to see scaled across the country. Again, like we've said, in our quest for ensuring all Kenyans have financial protection under UHC, we've committed to reforms. We're already there. We do thank particularly the two houses of parliament for ensuring that we now have NHIF legislation framework through the amendments that were done. And as highlighted by the chair, we are now looking at the regulations. And again, we ask you to walk with us as we walk in that journey to ensure that we, UHC will be a reality for each and every one of us. I've had a lot of contributions and I've often, like I said, admired the work of the Kenya Renal Association and all its stakeholders. And in the ministry, we want to take this further. We've been able to put together for the purposes of strengthening coordination and collaboration, what we are calling the Kenya Kidney Diseases Technical Working Group. And I'm hoping Dr. Ngege and your team, Nancy, you'll all be members of this technical working group because it's through this group we will be able to ensure that matters, kidney disease, are streamlined, are aligned, and are you know, enshrined in terms of policy. I've heard of the disease donor program. It's piqued my curiosity and it will be interesting and I've just been introduced to the focal point We'll be working on this in the Ministry of Health to see how we can actually ensure that that program comes into being. And that as a society, and I've seen this work outside of the country, that we all are duty bound, even in times where we are nearing death, and I know we all don't want to get there, but we are all living, and each day we wake up, we are dying. That's one way of looking at it. So perhaps to see what contributions we can make through that program that would go a long way in assisting our country and the citizens would need those kidneys or those organs. I've seen that there's a need for research. I think Prof has said the word research almost five times when he was giving his speech. And so one of the key things we've done is to improve our health information systems in the Ministry of Health. And I'm sure IAKI in of itself will probably start a registry for kidney disease. And we'll be able to leverage on this electronic investments so that we can have the information and the evidence that we need to be able to be of service to Kenyans. 
And as I conclude, I'd like to really appreciate and welcome the collaboration we've had with the Kenya Renal Association, Kenyatta National Hospital. I'd like to call him Dr. Gikonyo because he is a patient, but I can tell you he is a wealth of knowledge when it comes to kidney disease. I'd like to thank him. Thank you so much for that. And as the wind chases me away from the podium, thank you so much for paying attention, for listening, and for celebrating with us World Kidney Disease Day today. Let us all put effort in really eradicating this disease because it is possible. And let us remember our call to action today on ensuring that we don't get to that point where we need the dialysis. What can we do when it comes to ensuring that we are healthy and that we are actually looking at these lifestyle alternatives? Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, uh, Dr. Mwagangi, for your remarks. Now, we are coming to the conclusion of this event. Uh, and CS, I know you'll help us with this part. We always use cake, but that's because of a lack of imagination. Uh, this is not the healthiest thing to do, but uh, we are slaves of history and we've always had cake as part of our celebration. So to lead us in this cake cutting event will be uh, the Director of Nursing of KNH, Madam uh, Ryle, and uh, she'll be assisted by Matron Miyombe and Rosemary, who's one of our partners in Kenya Renal. Where Rosemary is with Medics Kenya. So, Madam Ryle, Karibu, uh, the band will help you. Uh, create the necessary atmosphere to generate an, an appetite in these guys. <laughs> uh, our distinguished guests, uh, ladies and gentlemen, now we've come to the, we say the peak of this uh, event where we need to share something and celebrate the tones that we've made in kidney care. So I'd like our chief guest, our CAF, Dr. Mwangagi, the chair, the chair of KH board, <coughs> Mr. Jojo for the chair, NHIF, and Brigadier Dr. Korea. The chair KRA, Dr. Ngige. The chair KRA, Dr. Ngige. KRA, the Kenya Revenue Authority, Tafadali. This is the doctor. This is the doctor. This is the doctor. This is the Nancy Wangombe. Ashushe barakoa, apewe keki Ashushe barakoa, apewe keki Ashushe barakoa, apewe keki 
Bara kwa Pemekeki Ili ajue kama ikona chumbi Ili ajue kama ikona chumbi Ili aonje kama iko sukari Ili aonje kama iko sukari Kata keki Kata Kata keki Kata keki Madakitari wapewe ndogo Madakitari wapewe ndogo Sababu keki ikona sukari Sababu keki ikona sukari Wapewe ndogo Inaweza kuharibu kidni Kata keki Kata keki Kata keki chukule sasa Na iyo keki inapendeza Na iyo keki inapendeza Na iyo keki ni tamu sana Na iyo keki ni tamu sana Si mama kama Si mama kama unataka keki Si mama kama Si mama kama unataka keki Si mama kama unataka keki Kata keki Kata Kata keki Kata Kata keki Kukule sasa Oh wapiga picha wasipewe keki Wapiga picha wasipewe keki Wanatu supportage Wapiga picha wasipewe keki Watu wa kamera wasipewe keki kata keki kata kata keki kata kata keki tukule sasa ah lakini bendi ipewe kubwa lakini bendi ipewe kubwa ili waweze kuimba vizuri ili tuweze tam 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 keki ni tamu aye Tam tam tam, keki ni tamu aye. Tam tam tam, keki ni tamu aye. Tam tam tam, keki ni tamu aye. We unajua jina uja onja aye. Thank you very much. The cake will continue to be up here. It's being cut. It will. Everyone will have a bite. No worries about that. So I would like now to invite Dr. Ahmed Sokwala to come and give a vote of thanks for everyone who has made this day possible. And then after that, we'll have the band come in and we can all enjoy the day. Dr. Sokwala, carry on. Thank you, uh, Dr. Wambugu. Thank you, everyone. Um, and uh, my name is uh, Dr. Ahmed Sokwala. I'm a kidney doctor at the Al-Tani University Hospital. And to start with, I want to thank the patients. Yeah, we're all here for the patients today, and we're doing a great job for the patients, so let's all continue doing the same. I would like to thank the Ministry of Health for being here and to hold our hands to this journey. I would like to thank the National Health Insurance Fund, NHIF, who have been our partners all through, and as we have heard a lot about it, you know, from 300 to 6,000 patients, and it's not been done without NHIF. The Kenya, Kenyatta National Hospital for giving us this opportunity to come here uh, to use your space and always being together with us and helping us with the East African Kidney Institute, the nephrology patients, the Kenya Renal Association, the Kenya Nurses uh, Nephrology Association, the industry who has supported us uh, with uh, a, a number of things. And thank you, everyone. Let's continue as uh, the CSA screening. Let's check our blood pressures. Let's check our urine. Make sure we don't get to the end before we pick up very early and prevent us to get into uh, end-stage adrenal disease. So thank you all. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sokwala. Uh, there's still cake in front. Feel free to come. Screening is continuing for the next uh, few minutes, so take the opportunity to get yourself screened. Uh, don't get out of there without knowing your sugars, without knowing your blood pressure. Uh, Band, Karibu, and uh, we thank you too for your constant partnership. Thank and you. Masha is part of KRA. Uh, we really appreciate you guys. Karibu. Sorry, sorry.
So we don't forget that this is an election year and of course we all have a duty as a country to come together. So in the same spirit, we want to sing this. We are a nation that must come together and make sure that uh, the 2022 elections and the choices that we make do not affect our partners, our, our patients badly, but in a good way. Kazini na kusini Naishi Tumaini Na jitolea Daima Kenya Hakika ya bedera Ni udha biti wangu Nye usi ya wana nchi Nye kundu ni ya Jani ya arthi Dai mami bim Kenya wana inchi mzale o Naishi Dai mami bim Kenya Promise it. 
Tati dereva ni kumbole shekari Nende kenyata ni mwone dakitari Alinandikia ni fike alhamisi Na misitaki kuivonja promisi Hii ni wimbo ya wababa Na wamama Na wamama Baba na wa mamas na wa mamas tuliondoka na yule dereva wa uba tulipofika pale na ibasha gari letu Lilipata panchari Ika wazima Tutachelewa Tuliondoka Na yule boda boda Tulipofika Pale CBD Tuliwakuta Kara wamekasirika Ika wazima Tishuke kwa boda Tulipofika kule na ikuru Nilimkuta yule sleku na mekasirika Nilimuambia siyo makosa yangu baby Gare langu nilipata panchari Sekia kusema kweli promise ya probox sinzuri Kwa sababu Probox ayaminiki Kusema kweli Probox ni gari Julieta, Julieta uko wapi Julieta, Julieta uko wapi Tangutulio na nanawe mwakulio pita uko wapi Tangutulia chana na wema kulio pita uko wapi Ulini acha kuwa mimi sijui kizungu Ulini acha kuwa mimi sijui kizungu Ukamfuata jaluo mwa kizungu Ukamfuata omera Yule jaluo amefuku kuza kami ya za kumbaya Yule jalu amefuku kuza tabia za kumbaya Julieta, Julieta uko wapi Ulini acha kuwa mimi sinagari Ukamfuata sponsor mwenye gari Yule mwana kakufuku kuza tabia za kumbaya Yule tajiri ya kakufuku za tabia za kumbaya Wani uwa uwa, kipenzi wani uwa uwa Wani uwa uwa, kipenzi wani uwa uwa Na wani uwa uwa, kipenzi wani uwa uwa Wani uwa uwa, kipenzi wani uwa uwa Kwa macho yako ya goroli ya ni uwa uwa Macho yako ya goroli ya ni uwa uwa Na shingo lako la upanga la ni uwa uwa Shingo lako la upanga la ni uwa uwa Na kiyuno chako chembamba cha ni uwa uwa Kiyuno chako chembamba cha ni uwa uwa Na nyuele za koza kununua za ni wawa Nyuele za koza kununua za ni wawa Na nyuele za koza supermarket za ni wawa Nyuele za koza supermarket za ni wawa Wani wawa kipenzi wani wawa Wani wawa Mwanangu wajali, 
hai kingiki astahili po mola mwenyewe mwanangu wajali ai kingiki astahili po mola mwenyewe ni chombo imara chenye thamani kile chopasishwa wingerezani ni chombo imara chenye thamani kile chopasishwa wingerezani kile guru malikoni kikapingi rika wale paseja wakapelea bahadini kile guru malikoni kikapingi rika wale paseja wakapelea bahadini aliona hiyo mola mwenyewe astahili po mola mwenyewe Ingomania papa angu, we boni wamze wangu, ye upenda twist. Nani zinamkumbusha alipo kwa kijana na matumaini sawa chichanga uhuru Oh ikomani ya babangu walikutana na mamangu walipenda twist na dance za usiku Daudi kabaka liwangazia tia na wakafunga ndoa na kuanza family aririri Oh ingomani ya babangu wimboni wa mzee wangu alikatarori kali kama kisu style za kinada Wamini sketi Na zile chocha vita Katia ona makanisa Hallelujah 